There's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. This is a blast from my past and yours out there in Booktube land. This is and formerly of, uh, can I say, of Beyond the Pages or formerly of Beyond the Pages. We'll get that straightened out uh, pronto here. But and welcome back to my channel. Thank you, Sean. Happy to be here. So is your channel just, uh, it's, it's, is it ancient history or? It's on a very long hiatus, I suppose. Okay. okay. Sorry, I may come back when things sort of settle down, but we'll see. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Maybe late this year or next year. I'm not promising anything. Depends on how life goes. Really? Yes. Well, in the meantime, you have a standing invitation to, to get your booktube fixed by appearing on mine. So uh, you said when things settle down, what has what is so unsettled in your world that you care to uh, share? Well, the last two years, I've been studying at university nonstop. So I did a sort of accelerated degree in librarianship and corporate information management. So I finished that just at the end of last year and graduated about two weeks ago. So we went to Perth and I walked to the stage and got my, my degree. So that was fun. So, yeah, so that took a lot out of me. <laughs> Thank you. And I also got a job about two years ago as well. So just as I had started my um, degree, I got a job in a library near me and I've been working there permanently now for, um, yeah, almost two years, I want to say. So, yeah, so that's what's been keeping me busy and my three kids and, you know. I was just going to say, in a house full of uh, rather yeah. rambunctious, lovely children. Yes, yes. Well, thanks for making time just to talk with me for uh, for a few minutes because you're you're very busy. <laughs> no, no, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I haven't spoken to you for a long time, so this is fun. But there must have been something about getting going to your convocation or your graduation and finishing everything for the degree because I've noticed you've been quite active on Instagram, and I think yeah. you've been maybe reading more than you had been for quite a while. So that's what made, gave me the idea. Hmm. And I need to catch up on what she's been reading. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think we have quite a bit of overlap. So I'm just going to let you take it away and tell us. Do you want to go, uh, do, do you want to just randomly start telling us about books chronologically or the best one and the worst one? Or how do you, you just go? Well, uh, maybe I'll talk about some of my like five star reads of this year so far. And then maybe right. talk about some of the ones I read last year that I really liked as well. So this year I've been on a bit of a uh, non-fiction kick as well. So I'm enjoying books about authors or their letters or journals. And so I read the um, letters of Shirley Jackson, who her son um, curated. So her, cur her son curated all her letters together in this one big book. And oh, it... <laughs> She makes such the mundane things so exciting, like just going to the grocery store and sitting at home writing her book. And I didn't want to put this book down. So, um, yeah, it's just it was so interesting to see her sort of inner workings of her, you know, mind. And I loved that book. So um, I am a big fan of Shirley Jackson's books as well. So I think that helped a little bit. But, um, yeah, she's such an interesting person because she she suffered from mental illness as well. I think she had agoraphobia and some sort of depression and things. It doesn't really state that in the letters, but, like, when you, like, look her up, um, they do state that she had a few mental health issues. But you can kind of see that as it goes through the letters as well because it goes chronologically through her life. Is it a re recent publication or...? Yeah, I think it was only published like, oh, I want to say last year or the year before. Okay. Um, so it's quite recent. Uh, yeah, so it was her son, her eldest son that published those for her. Um, so I don't know if she ever wanted them to be released to the public, but, um, yeah, oh, I think he probably did it in a way that, like, took things out that were, you know, probably embarrassing to her or whatever. But, 
Um, yeah, they were really, really good. <laughs> and then I did read the third book in uh, the Diary of a Bookseller series by Sean Bethel. He's that oh, yes. Wigtown Scottish fella that owns a bookshop so, and um, this is his third diary. And so I've always loved those. I didn't know that it was a series, so that's interesting, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think this one's set in 2016 or something, the year of 2016, so got nothing to do with like, the pandemic or anything like that. It's just, you know, um, running a bookshop, trying to make men ends meet, that sort of thing. Yeah, really love his wit and his um, and his humour and just how sarcastic he can be as well. I really love that. So <laughs> there's another That's one. That's right. Ams and I get along so well. <laughs> That's true. I read The World of Yesterday by Stefan Zweig. So right, read Zweig, yeah. Mm. So that's a nonfiction. I wasn't sure going into it whether I liked it or not, but it's his memoir and it's up until, like, I think it's the year that he dies. Um, and it kind of is not just about him. It's the way life changed throughout the world wars and all the political, you know, anarchy that happened at that time and because um, he was Austrian and he was Jewish and so he talks about the German occupation, that sort of thing, and how it affected his life and the way he was as a professional. And I thought it was really, really interesting and really, really uh, just, yeah, kind of thought-provoking it just makes you think about how just these subtle changes in politics can change like people's lives instantly. It was really, yeah. It wasn't dry or anything either. It was quite a page turner. Like I really I read that in like maybe two or three days, which is pretty fast for a five hundred page nonfiction book. <laughs> so I've heard really good things about it. My friend Cecilia from Singapore. Um Loved it, and she's been on my bite size chat, bite size book chat series to talk about it. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And then there's a standout book that I've read this year, and this is all thanks to you, Sean, that you recommended this book to me. I think you know what I'm talking about, but it's uh, London Belongs to Me by Norman. Ah. Yes, yes, so, I think you really, really loved it. I did, and I think you didn't enjoy it as much as I did. But you knew that it was a and book, so that's why you recommended it to me. I think, I, I think it, it was a five star read for me until I got to the ending, and I thought the ending it kind of fell out, fell off at the end. Yeah. But up until then, I just absolutely loved it, and I think about it all the time. In many mm. ways, it's just such a incredible novel. Very intricate as well. You don't realize that until the end, do you? Like you go, oh, that was that was a lot, <laughs> and I didn't even realize. So, so it's basically following these group of people that live at 10 Dulcimer Street, I think. <laughs> Can't believe I remember that address. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, so they're all living in different flats. It's just before World War II. And, uh, yeah, they all just lead very different lives. But they all are sort of interconnected. And, um, yeah, so there's this, you know, older couple with an older daughter and uh, she's wanting to move out. And then there's another um, son and mother at the top somewhere on the, on the top flat. And uh, he's uh, into some thieving. <laughs> we'll just say it, keep it at that. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, then there's the um, landlady. And then, yeah, so there's a, there's a lot of different characters. And it just. The character work was to die for. It was, it was. It was That's strong crazy. characters. I think he published it pretty close to the time that it was set in, right? So it was, wasn't it published really early in World War II? It was published, it was the early 1940s. It was somewhere around the 1940s that he published it, like the early 1940s. I remember reading that. So we're not going to say what the ending was, and I actually have oh, lost yeah. a lot of my memory about what it was that didn't quite work for me about the ending, but yeah. I thought it would have been brilliant it's tragic, a tragic, brilliant ending if the house got bombed and everybody died. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah, would have been more satisfying tragic. to me. Than, well, and then than one, at least one person left out of that bombing, maybe. 
Maybe just, one left, one left, yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. So that memory yeah. sort of runs off. <laughs> that, I don't know opening scene, <laughs> that opening scene with the man who retires, it's the first chapter, if I remember correctly. Oh, he, gets a a clock. Clock. he gets a clock, and then it, I forget, he yeah. has, goes out for a, too many drinks, and then it's raining yeah. or something, and by the time he gets the clock home, it's just about... Oh, such a powerful was, opening. <laughs> and he couldn't open the door. I just thought that was amazing how she wrote that. It was just like you really felt for him. You just felt like you wanted to carry the clock for him so that he could get home. That's such a sad song. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Oh my no, God, I, now I, I want to read <laughs> it. You make me want to reread it. I was trying to find something else by Norman Collins, and I was like, "There's nothing." Where it is seems to be. Nothing works. Yeah, yeah. I, think it's, I think it's a few, but none that are as um, mm. claimed as as uh, "London Belongs to Me." What a what a fantastic title! It's brilliant. It's such a good book, and I think I'll re reread it many well, many times. Maybe hit me up for a reread. <laughs> Buddy re Probably not this year though, because I've re only read it. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Well, and then we must uh, talk about Susan Scarlet. We must. <laughs> so I only discovered her at the end of last year, and I bought her books. I bought a couple of them. I think there was someone on Instagram had 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 bought them or something, and I saw them, and I was like, I need to have these books. Didn't even know what they were about. <laughs> Yeah, dived into, oh, what was the first one called that I read? Uh, the Man in the Dark. I don't know if you've read that one. No, I've only read Close Picks. Okay, Close so I, I dived into The Man in the Dark and I just immediately fell in love and needed to do a reading challenge for this year <laughs> and read all of her books, like one because, each month. <laughs> um, Dean Street Press, Furled Middle Brow imprint, they had brought all of her, the Susan Scarlet books, back into print. Isn't there about okay. eight or ten of them? Twelve of them. Twelve of them. Yeah, that's why I thought I'd do one a month this year. How so fabulous. That I... That's the pen name of the uh, famous children's writer, Noelle Stretfield. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So I've read uh, Noelle's other books. Uh, I can't even remember what they were called, but definitely ballet shoes I read as a child. And then uh, there's a few other books, um, adult books that I've read, but I can't remember. They were in the Persephone uh, collection, those grey covers. Yeah, so I read The Man in the Dark now, Babacombs and Close Pets. That I've heard is really good. That's one of the ones that everybody says is one of her best. Yeah, so Babacombs one. The, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That one, I I equally love the ball for different reasons. Okay. But, uh, yeah, they're just so, I don't know what it is about them, but they're just so cozy and comforting to read and wholesome and I don't know what it is. It's just, and the characters are just so well oh, fleshed uh, and, out. And, well. And, the, and, and I agree with all of the adjectives you're using and the thing for me that was so shocking was that when I hear those adjectives about a book, I just run screaming. You just don't want to hear. <laughs> you're the opposite. Cozy, a cozy romance? What the hell? <laughs> But I loved the clothes peg. It just warmed oh, my yeah. heart, and it was just beautiful. I, I loved it. It was moving. It was a page turner. The characters were so. I loved the characters. Yeah, uh, I loved yeah. the romance plot. Yeah. What the hell. I don't. I'm not a big romance reader. Like you won't see me sitting reading romance on you know on my day off. Like I'd be reading something <laughs> so very entirely different. But um. Yeah, these ones I will happily, if I could, read the 12 books in a row and then forget about them and then read them again. That's probably what I would do. <laughs> well, that, sadly, that, that might happen someday, Ange. <laughs> oh, hopefully not. <laughs> Although maybe um, in 20 years' time I'll forget what happened and then I can read them all again. <laughs> I really love, the, again, the character work. I'm such a char character-driven reader. But I love the character work and the dialogue was so smart. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Really intelligent. Yeah. 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 And I laughed at, like quite a bit as well. Like yes. I wasn't like, yes. surprised, but I, you know, found things funny. And 
but then I also found things frustrating too. So I was like, why did you just go do this? Why did she do this? But so yeah. you're, when did you start your one a month on in January? Yes, in January. Okay. So, so what which one are you reading in March? What are we in January, February, March? Oh, so I I well. In January, I read two of them, so I cheated on my one. You cheated? Of my- <laughs> well, maybe you're going to be done your twelve books by by May, I think. <laughs> I know. Um, so this month, I haven't read anything this month from her, so I'm allowing myself to. So I'm going to read Sally Ann this month because that's the one that it's on my shelf at the moment. So I'm going to give that are one you, a go. Are you reading them in chronological order? No, no, just just, never- just whatever tickles my fancy when. Excellent. And I think we're going to call this reading project uh, Ange's Susan Scarlet in Halathon. Yeah. Is that also probably what it will be? <laughs> well, it, there's your husband. Hello. Long time no see. <laughs> Look at him. Yeah. Is that a he or a she? Penny. Penny. <laughs> that interruptions are most welcome on my channel. That's good to know. Uh-huh. Yeah, so... Um, it brings me back to, and I just have to put this in here, it brings me back, makes me feel nostalgic for all of our many, many, many buddy reads we did on Voxer over the years. I know, we did so many. And, and you would, your kids were, were needed a lot of your attention in the midst of <laughs> our your Voxer check-ins, and I, I got to hear a whole bunch of stuff about your family life and your <laughs> conversations with your kids. Oh, yes. it, it sounds it sounds kind of weird to say that dog interruption reminds me of your kids, but it kind of does. <laughs> I think this this little this little girl needs me more than my kids do these days because they've gotten so big and they've um, gotten a little bit more independent. You know, they, they do need me sometimes. Have you had any disappointing reads so oh. far in twenty twenty three? Yes. And do you care to share, or do you want to? No, I can share them. That's fine. Okay. I've had two disappointing reads. Uh, one was called Once Upon a Tome. Uh, it's a nonfiction book. And it's about a bookseller or an antiquarian bookseller in the UK. Okay. Um, I was disappointed in this one uh, only because, like, the... The title on the cover kind of gives you the idea that this guy is a bookseller and is someone who is dealing with antiquarian books. Like it's a certain, you know, you'd you'd think he was talking about a certain subject in the book. He's not quite that. If like he's not quite a bookseller. So it kind of just gave you the wrong idea about the book and I just didn't think it was very well written and I was a little bit bored. It was just, and he talked about other people more than he did himself or the actual business and it just felt like he was going off on these tangents that didn't make sense and that's the only reason that I didn't like the book. So yeah, that was one that I didn't like. Um, can we hold on for one second? Mm, yeah, oh, absolutely. What is it you want, darling? Yes, you can. Thank you for asking. <laughs> As we speak about interruptions, though. <laughs> Did she ask if she could go outside for a smoke or something? <laughs> it's not quite as bad. She asked me if I, she could have my phone. She wants to go on my phone. <laughs> so. All right, so the next book that I didn't quite enjoy was The White Bird Passes by Jesse Kesson. Kesson. Oh, oh. Um, uh, is that, have I, I read that one? I think you have read that one. I think I saw you on the Goodreads page that you had read it. I think you gave it a bit of a higher rating than me. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's, um, I gave it five stars. So what's yeah. wrong with you, Ange? What's wrong with you? <laughs> I don't know why I didn't quite enjoy this. I think I was just, I was kind of bored throughout the entire book and I just felt, um, I don't know, it might have been the language in it that just kind of 
it felt a bit jolty to me, like it didn't really flow for me. Um, yeah, I, I just I can I can see fun. that critique yeah. very much, but I also Ooh. don't remember very much about it. I read it more than two years or more ago. Mm. Um, yeah, May twenty twenty, so it'll be almost three years ago, and I don't remember yeah. much about it. I remember that it was not necessarily reader friendly. Like I, I felt the language was sometimes a little bit kept me out, but I was intrigued by that. And by the end, I felt like I'd kind of gotten a little bit in. Mm. But I just I don't yeah. remember why I gave it five stars or. Yeah, or, and I don't like honestly. Right now, I I read it probably a couple of months ago, and I really don't remember anything much about it either, except that I didn't like the language. Or it just felt jolty to me and I was kind of bored. And I think, and I just wanted it to end, <laughs> even though it was a short book. Yeah. Now, I, I, I obviously enjoyed it more than that because I went and got two more books by her. her mm. One more book by her and a, and a biography of her. Oh, okay. Yep. Her own life fascinated me a lot. So that could have fed into... Yeah. Yeah, I'm enjoying it more, but uh, I, but the fact that I don't remember really almost nothing about it mm. wasn't there. Um, didn't the children's Would... mother take them through the woods to visit a eccentric grandmother or something? Possibly, and it was. Um, you don't remember either. <laughs> was it in Scotland? I think it was definitely then, Scotland. Yeah. yeah, she lived in this lane that had like. Oh yeah, she lived, lived in a, lane right on a like, very busy street. Yeah, that had these like Pops certain and... characters that were, you know, promiscuous yes. at the end of the lane, and then like it was quite rough, and she would a get very queen. rough area. Yeah, the setting I thought was quite vivid. And she, yeah, she did go to her grandmother's. Now I remember she would like her mother would take it, and then I just kind of thought, why didn't she live with her grandmother if her mother was so bad at like. <laughs> being able to look after her why didn't she I, I think that's what confused me about like it was just like why is this yeah so it wasn't it a memoir was it? no no I don't but I think it was probably I believe it was heavily autobiographical but oh it wasn't. okay yeah I just think I think yeah I just didn't like the way it was written I think that was my main issue well, I think this might be the first that's the first example I can think of where I liked a book better than you. When we mm. we often disagree, but it's usually because you liked a book and I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Helen Humphreys all over again, except the other way around. <laughs> the other way around, yeah. Yeah, that was quite a doozy, wasn't it? What was it? The fish the fish tacklers one. The with the fish tackler, yeah, whatever that was. <laughs> Even um, my friend Lindy would agree. Lindy thinks that uh, my mom and I are both crazy that we thought that novel was very forgettable. So well, I'm glad that someone else enjoyed it. <laughs> like I did. Oh, I think quite a few other people enjoyed it. Yeah. I'll put the cover gift up because I can't remember the title of that one, but it was uh, yeah, we, and and came to Tokyo to do a, a buddy read with me. <laughs> well, she had other reasons, she and her husband, to come to Tokyo when I lived there. And and we did a one of those pseudo-buddy read videos where we didn't talk about the book at all. We had done a thousand buddy reads before, the normal buddy read, but this one we just read it and we met up in Tokyo and, and Angela's mouth just dropped when she found out that it was a one-star read for me. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. It did. It did. Yeah, because you loved um, the Lost yeah. Garden. Yeah, yep. Yeah. You read that one before me, I think, or I read. Yeah, we didn't buddy yeah. read that one, but we both loved that yeah, one. Agreed. It. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I love any of her nonfiction that I've read. I've loved. Oh, okay. I read the next novel too, and thought it was just as bad. So I won't read that's any a, more. Rabbit foot one. Rabbit. Yeah. Yes. I haven't read that one because I haven't been able to get my hands on a copy because they're so well, hard. I wish I still had mine. I'd send it to you. I don't have it anymore. Yeah, but those are the two that stand out that I didn't really. Yeah, they were like they're probably two stars each. Those ones that I gave that I talked about before. So. Uh, so you. Tell us yeah. some of the highlights of 2022 reading. 
Well, 2022, I didn't read as many books as I had ever previously, just because I was finishing off my university degree and I was, um, or I was working as a librarian um, part-time and I was doing archival um, work at a university here because that was part of my degree as well so I really didn't have much time last year I managed to read 68 books though which I thought was a pretty good feat considering yes Um, (laughs) but uh there are a couple that I really enjoyed so there was well a couple there's probably about 10 or so that were like five star reads for me have you read Haruki Murakami's what I talk about when I talk about running yes that was a bail for me Oh, really? Oh, see, I loved it. So I really, I, really I, liked it. Oh, it's a very popular book by him, but <laughs> uh, his nonfiction just leaves me cold. I've tried oh, two or three really? nonfiction books and I just can't get into them. Oh, Plus, okay. I'm not the slightest bit interested in running, so the topic oh, was boring. See. <laughs> yeah. see, I like running and I also like writing. So both aspects, you know, really intrigued me. That's why I sort of... Uh, yeah, really loved that book just because he kind of interwove both aspects into that book. But, Are you yeah. a fan of his fiction? I do like his fiction. I I read Norwegian Wood a long time ago, back when I first started BookTube, I think. I think it was, so. Uh, I want to say 10 years ago um, that I read Norwegian Wood. And then I didn't read something by him for a long time after that. I don't know why, I just probably didn't. I was in a Victorian kick for a while, you know, Thomas Hardy and (laughs) the Bronte. I think think your Victorian kick lasted almost as long as the Victorian era, and. (laughs) Thanks, Sean. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, I didn't read anything by him for a long time. And then I picked up this book, and then that's what got me sort of back into reading his. So then last year after that, I read South. Oh, what's it called? South. Oh, east of the sun, west of the something, yeah. South of the border, east of the sun. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. something like that. And then I read Wind slash Pinball because I kind of wanted to read from, like, what he first wrote. I wanted to read in order, basically. But I've kind of thrown that out the window. <laughs> but I've got, um, so I, I liked those and I've read something by him this year, I want to say. Oh, no, I read his other nonfiction by him this year, which I gave a four star. Like I wasn't enamoured with that one. I just thought that was a little bit outdated and just didn't really. Was that about the um, Kobe earthquake or? No, that was the novelist as a vocation. But these are oh. all essays that he had written in magazines over the, like, yeah. last 10 years, 12 years. And it was published in Japan, I think, in the 2015. And it just doesn't correlate. It talks a lot about publishing and about writing and the trends and that sort of thing and and awards and that. And it's changed so much from then till now that it just didn't really. Pretty dated. It, yeah, it just felt like I was just, I, there was no reason for me to read it. Like it just didn't give me anything. Um, it just gave me, you know, a little bit about the publishing industry in 2015 rather than, you know, just didn't, yeah. I, didn't I just it. heard maybe yesterday that he's got a new magnum opus coming out Ooh. in Japanese this year or I think of this year and it's over a thousand pages. Uh, same like one Q eight four or whatever. But maybe cool. maybe maybe even longer. Yeah. Oh, okay. That sounds great. Yeah. I I haven't read the the one that came out after IQ eighty four or one Q eighty four. Uh, oh, Common oh, Dory. Okay. I haven't read it yet. I I'm looking forward oh. to reading it. Yeah. But, uh, have you read I, a lot of his fiction? Yes, I have. My favorite definitely is the Wind Up Bird Chronicle. Okay, yep. There's a lot of history in it, and I thought that that's my favorite. But mm-hmm. a close second would be Kafka, Kafka on the Shore. Yeah, I just bought that one, so hopefully I can get to that one soon. I thought 1Q84 mm-hmm. was a, a failure, but 
still a masterpiece at the same time. Like it was just, okay. it was too much, but it was still incredible. And then of his earlier work, I recently read, I think Sputnik Sweetheart, which I thought was oh, outstanding. Yeah. Okay. There'll be a sizable chunk of the people watching this that will be vomiting, listening to us praise Murakami because he's kind of politically incorrect these days. He, yeah, he is. He is. Yeah. You know, you got to love some things from the past as well. So even though they can be politically incorrect, you know. I don't want to say too much or I'm going to get cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, well, uh, I'll go on to another book that I really loved. I read Shakespeare and Company by Sylvia Beach in early 2022. And she's the one that started the Shakespeare and Company store and the publishing house. And she started, you know, she was friends with James Joyce and that sort of thing. And this is her um, biography, memoir, something um, about her doing all that. And I loved that book. That was yeah, something that, you know, I just love books and reading and all that sort of thing and when you can bring that all together and <laughs> write about it, it's what That's I love. Very good things about that book. Yeah, I think you would enjoy that too, that one. It was very well written too, I think. Um, it's hard to get though. I feel like um, it's not readily available. And then I did read The Inseparables by Simone de Beauvoir. So that was the newest book by her that came out last year, I want to say. And that one's more of a sort of semi-biographical, autobiographical book. Um, it's sort of based on her childhood friend, Um that this is not a spoiler because it says it on the back, but she dies when she's quite young in her twenties, and this, um, and it's basically just talking about their friendship as they grow up together, and uh, yeah, I thought it was a really really good book. I actually was quite surprised that it hadn't been published until now, but um, yeah, I really enjoyed that one as well. Have yeah. you read any Annie Erno, the Nobel Prize winner? No, well, I think no. you'd like her. I've only read one, but mm -hmm. oh, I think, I think you would you would gobble up all of her books once you'd read one. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll have to. Look They're all very up. short, but they, they punch way, way, way above their weight to use a crude mm -hmm. boxing metaphor. Yeah, no, that's well, that's what I found with this one as well. It kind of was a really short book, but really, yeah, packed a punch, as you were, you know, saying like it. Right, and then before you move on, one more thing. Sorry. Mm -hmm. When you said I read a, a book called The Inseparables, my heart just sank because I read a really shitty novel called The Inseparables by <laughs> Stuart Nadler. Oh, you just, don't like that one? <laughs> and I, I don't know if he stole the title from, from Simone de Beauvoir or what, but I thought, oh, my God, I hope he didn't like that novel. It was terrible. So a different book. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah, then I read quite a few nonfiction, but one that stood out was The Unwomanly Face of War by Svetlana Aleksevich. Yeah, so I still haven't read her most famous work, Chernobyl Prayer, but um, I read the uh, this one and it was just, yeah, I can't say I loved it. Like it's very hard-hitting and very heavy. It's so basically it talks about... Uh, her interviewing uh, Russian women who were fought during the war, but they were forgotten about. They didn't want to know that these women had been in war. They tried to sort of erase their their history and the fact. But then some of the women were also very quite wary of talking to her about it because they're like, I don't want my husband to know that I was in the war. And um, they were kind of embarrassed sometimes but you know and then some were really very proud that they were in the war and they discussed what they had to do and where they would what they were doing and some of them were like 16 years old these girls that were going into war uh this is during world war ii if anyone's wondering but um and when you say going okay. into war do you mean combat yes yes so they weren't and just combat. you know they weren't nurses and they weren't just in the like back lines, you know, helping out. They were, you know, fighting with guns and tanks and 
they were they were full in full combat on like you know the front lines they were doing what the men were doing they were standing right next to them and these women were you know so young basically erased because they were you know I don't know if they were um what would you say like they weren't humiliated by the fact that they needed women to to fight with them, but they just also didn't think it was womanly as it's, you know, that's what the title sort of suggests. It's the unwomanly face of war. So, like, you know, they they wanted to, the women to be women. It was 1930s, 1940s, you know. It's something that they didn't want to discuss. And a lot of them, um, you know, shaved their heads or cut their hair short um to look more like men to fight in these wars because they wanted to have their home country you know they didn't want the children to suffer and uh that sort of thing so it was a really yeah devastating deeply heavy book but I think really really important to read as well Mm -hmm. I think um I think Svetlana is a really um great journalist who really gets to um you know the hard-hitting things and I think her books are worth yeah, hearing uh, amazing things about her, all of her books, or many, a few of her oh. books for, for years. Oh. Did she win the Nobel a few years ago? Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. so. Yeah, let's go on to the one <laughs> that's a bit happier, and it's called Only Happiness Here. So, sounds a lot happier. It sounds a lot happier. <laughs> uh, this one's by Gabrielle Carey. Um, it's called Only Happiness Here in Search of Elizabeth von Arnhem. So Elizabeth von Arnhem is a author from like the early 19th, 20th century. And so this is sort of like a look into her life and her works and trying to find these nine or I think ten, I can't remember, things that would make you happy in life. And it sounds ridiculous when you say it like that. But she sort of deep dives into Elizabeth's life and says this is what she did to, like, be happy. She did a garden. She did this. She wrote this. She wrote about this. This is what, like, you know, and it was just kind of a little way into Elizabeth von Arnhem's life. So it's kind of like a biography, but then also had this aspect of this is how she wanted to be happy and what made her happy. So it was just so well written. I think it's by an Australian author as well um which I always you know like because I'm from Australia <laughs> if no one knew and um and yeah I just absolutely loved it and I still think about this book to this day so you know when a book stays with you that long I think that's a sign of a good book but um yeah really 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 loved that one and I love anything um about authors or especially ones from you know the early 19 19- hundreds or like the 1800s are like any sort of memoir or biography about them so so elizabeth yeah. von arnhem i think you've probably read all of her stuff haven't you uh about all of her stuff i haven't read everything but a lot of her stuff so what's your favorite so i'd have to go with the the answer the enchanted april which is like her main like most famous works I do like her book, um, Elizabeth in her German Garden. I quite enjoy that one as well. And Vera, which a lot of people think that um, Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier is ripped off of Vera by Elizabeth von Arnhem, which I like. I see the similarities, but I don't see the, you know, outright plagiarism that she would have. It would be dishonest for me to let this part of the conversation go by without mentioning that I read my first Elizabeth von Arnhem last summer, and it oh. was This Enchanted April, and oh, yeah. I didn't like the end. I didn't like the ending at all. Oh, really? I, I oh. loved it until the ending. I, um, without doing a spoiler, when all the men showed up, it just ruined the book for me. Yeah, because it was I, such a yeah. proto-feminist story, and then it just oh, what are those men doing here? <laughs> Why are they interrupting their lovely time? <laughs> yeah, so I can, well I can kind of see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can kind of see what you what you mean by that. But it was so yeah. well written and with lots of humor, and the characters were were unforgettable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any disappointments from twenty twenty two? 
There's about three. So one's called They, which is by K. Dick. It's a post-apocalyptic or a dystopian novel from a while back. I really can't quite remember why I didn't like it. Doesn't sound like an Ange book, so that's probably why. No, it doesn't. Absolutely not. <laughs> oh, there was one called Illyrian Spring by Anne Bridge. So this is about a woman. I quite vividly remember this one now. Uh, it's about a woman who uh, leaves her husband, sort of escapes him. Um, and she's got two grown children and she just goes on a holiday, doesn't tell anyone she's going. Um, it's set in, I think, like the early 1900s, so 1910, around that time. She leaves um, and goes, I think, to Italy or Spain. No, Italy. She goes to Italy, meets a young man there, and she's all about wanting to discover herself and paint and that sort of thing. Oh, she does little painting. She does, you know, little discovering herself and more just following this man, a little boy around. And uh, to really like it. <laughs> I think it was just more the plot that I didn't like. It, like the writing was fine, was okay, but I just, yeah. The plot itself I just thought was messy and silly. And then the next one was uh, Bewildering Cares by Winifred Peck. Okay, I've heard of that. And it's a Persephone book, right? No, it's a Dean Street Press book. Oh, yeah, um, I see that. You didn't like it? Why I not? I don't quite remember. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, so she was a vicar's wife. I don't, I think I was just bored. I feel like, I feel like I just have, just, I look at the cover and go, nah, it was boring. <laughs> so I think that's what all it was, is that I just felt like there was nothing to this book. I think it was a biographical book about her time during World War, like early World War Two, And I just thought it was, yeah, trivial and boring. And yeah, so. <laughs> How lovely to chat with you. So you'll come back maybe, how about next week? You'll probably have read 17 more books by <laughs> next week, so we can talk about those. <laughs> maybe, but uh, probably not. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thanks for having me, Sean.